Hello guys and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishment Part 14. Holmes, for heaven's sake, whatever is going on? Oh, oh, hello Watson. You are early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Holmes, where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked. We will have honey all year round. Ridiculous and dangerous. They are domestic bees. Apis mellifera. Such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment. A theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well... I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. <laughs> Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, however did you guess? For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on, admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. Let us be off. Well, Holmes, here we are at the Royal Botanic Gardens. There's no doubt that this place is beautiful. But are you really intent on investigating the theft of the plants? Yes, of course. Okay. Here we are. Don't touch anything else, is that clear? Just go and get a bucket of fertilizer. And without turning it over this time, Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? If you are here for a visit, please do come back on Sunday. I am afraid that it cannot wait. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. We are investigating the theft of plants that took place here five days ago. A remarkable collection, I believe. So you're the one in charge, eh? A small favor for a friend. Now to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? I am Martin Hamish. I am the deputy director of Kew Gardens, and that fellow yonder is Albert. He works here. I am delighted to meet you. What can you tell us about the plants? They were rare and exceptional plants. We presented them at our last exhibition. We haven't removed the stand yet. It is still in the large glass house. We only learned of their disappearance the evening after the exhibition, and nobody saw anything. No doors were forced? No. But I would imagine that for a thief it would be fairly easy to gain entry, for there are no guards here. Well, if you don't mind, we will take a look. Now, you say that it is in the large glass house. Yes, the one just behind me. Just a second, since Albert has nothing else to do. Albert, show these gentlemen where the exhibition was held. How many people Please. work here? Only myself, but occasionally two students, Albert, whom you have met, and Miss White. Right. Here it is. This is the place where the stolen plants were exhibited. Thank you. Is there something the matter? Yes, there is. All right, the plants were valuable and rare, but it seems to me that the tragedy that took place here only two days ago has been entirely forgotten already. What tragedy are you referring to? My... the director of Kew Gardens, Mr. Montague Dunn. He died here just two days ago. We're very sorry. We were not aware. The two of you were good friends? 
He... He was my father. Oh dear. Our condolences. We should not be troubling you. Please do excuse us for the intrusion. You say that he died here, in the large glass house. Holmes? Yes. Just here, near the door to the colonial collection. He suffered a heart attack. Just like that. So suddenly. It was terrible. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I cannot remain here. If you need me, I'll be in the reserve. That's the room next to the front of the large greenhouse. Of course, we understand. We do, sir. According to Albert, this is where his father, Montague Dunn, was found dead. The traces are thinner in some places. These boot marks are fresh. It appears as though someone was dragging their feet. The footprints reveal that someone staggered here. Soil. It should have come from a flower pot. The soil on the side of this flower shelf is the same as that on the ground. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. What? The door was smashed at shoulder height. This door handle is new. It was recently changed. This pot was broken fairly recently. Hmm. A flower pot recently fell down from these shelves and was misplaced. The esconson was breached near the handle. The door was forced from the inside of the colonial collection room. The handle was changed afterwards. I think we need to inspect the colonial collection. Blood. This sign is broken. Something heavy was dropped upon it. Someone fell violently against this sign, and they were injured in the clash. Most likely a head wound. All the clues around here are quite suspicious. I need my imagination to make sense of it all.
This reconstruction reveals a disturbing fact. Montague Dunn damaged the door of the colonial collection room. He was in a panic, or the door was locked. Was it an accident or a murder then, I wonder? I think we need to inspect the colonial collection room. Very oh, Jesus. I I should have done that. These windows were perfectly cleaned. The smell is strong. It is a detergent. This broken fragment was the result of a heavy blow. Fragment of marble, most likely chipped from a statue or sculpture. Part of this greenhouse was emptied and thoroughly clean. Brilliant. Go to Scotland Yard to perform an autopsy. An autopsy. I asked Inspector Lestrade to take Montague Dunn's body to Scotland Yard. It's ready for autopsy then. Mr. Holmes? <laughs> Holmes? A beautiful feather pen of a good make. This watch is of great value. A membership card for the London Crest Club. London Crest. Let's go perform the autopsy. First of all, let us carry out an external examination. There are no suspicious marks upon the chest. Let us finish our external examination so that we can proceed with the autopsy. There is an injury to the skull, most probably caused by the fall in the water lily greenhouse. The vessels and the pupil of the eye appear quite normal. The air from the lungs carries a faint floral aroma Hmm. No redness, stings, or bruises. <laughs> Fingers look a bit weird. Nothing suspicious here. Now, let us examine the internal organs. <laughs> the heart's blood vessels show no pathological signs. Ooh, not the signs. The liver is enlarged. It would seem that he was suffering from an alcohol addiction. 
the liver tissue is brown. There are no visible pathological signs. The heart tissue shows no visible pathological signs. And the heart and the liver. Lungs. The lungs are congested and edematous. Ooh. The tissue on the inferior lobe of the right lung is damaged, most probably caused by toxins from an unknown plant. Stomach. The stomach tissues show no visible pathological signs. There is a small amount of content. It appears that he breakfasted lightly, only a short while before his death. His suspicions have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning, plant poisoning to be more exact. You mean... Yes, it is murder. We should inform the strong. There's been a murder. Yes, but do remember, Watson, that I discovered the murder. The challenge is mine. The challenge, Holmes? We need to locate that deadly plant. Such a perfect murder appeals to me. Murder of any kind appeals to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also have the people working at Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke with Mr. Hamish. Should we bring them all here for interrogation? No. A few innocuous questions at Q will suffice, as well as a discreet delve into their personal affairs. Yes, Watson. It is time now to open the doors. Even those in the staff building? I suppose that is necessary. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> More than a little. <laughs> sure thing, any I, Sherlock? Portrait. Expensive glasses. Dirty colour. Gardener's hands. Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the colonial collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. You won't, mate. <laughs> Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. 
His heart attack was quite unexpected. As Deputy Director, how is your relationship with Montague done? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And... He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Lethal plants. Now tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Right. Just be careful with the plants during your inspection. Yes, Mr. Hamish. You won't do anything that we will regret, will you, Mr. Watson? Oh, doctor. Can I help you, gentlemen? Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. Right. Hmm. Uh, do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. I'm also studying botany at the University of London. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah. At the moment, I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. Hmm. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man. He never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I've been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path. I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the Deputy Director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the Deputy Director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honor of being the garden's longest serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone, dismissively, with indifference. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Right. Now then.
Head to the big boy. To the flower bed in Hamish. Out of two shells, the first keeping. Locked. 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 Seed house, nursery. Water lily greenhouse. Seed house. Colonial collection. Dry tropics. Seed house. A task list for Albert, compiled by Martin Hamish. Sweep out the palm house, scrub the toilets, clean the storage shed tools. Palm house. Palm house. Very tropical. Do not touch. The plants were here. All of them were stolen. Here is a list of the stolen plants. These plants were stolen. According to this, they have light and moisture control in some parts of the building. Building. There is a smell of burning. Smell of burning? The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. Guess A protective not. mask. Someone set it alight, but it did not burn. The remains of a picture frame. A door handle? Why would anyone throw such a thing in the fire? The door handle to the colonial collection and that of the fireplace are made of the same material. A broom handle was half burned. The plants were set alight fairly recently. Some have not completely burned. Hmm.
Look, Holmes, this charming lady must be Miss White. She's entering the seed house. Open. There she is. Good day to you, miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Oh, why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. This is my good friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I am honored to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am he. What a pleasure to see you here at Kew Gardens. Are you working on a case? Okay, let's do Margaret's doodah first. Expensive perfume. <laughs> yes, a theft of plants that took place here a few days ago after their most recent exhibition. <laughs> oh yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. Oh, it's quite understandable that you might forget about the theft of the plants, miss, after the tragedy that took place here. Yes. The director was a truly good man. It is such a terrible misfortune. Right. Oh, would you happen to know why part of the colonial collection was cleared? No, I have never been there. Do you work here? Part time only. I am a biology student at the London University. I attend the same classes as the son of Mr. Montague Dunn. That is how I found my chance to work here for part of my thesis, you see. It is a great honor. Hmm. How well did you know Mr. Montague Dunn? He was a master, a great leader. I saw him almost as a spiritual father. Oh, he had nice. an exceptional nature? Oh yes, indeed. He was always so active and so optimistic and very nice to me, although he could behave harshly towards his son. Why so? He loved his son dearly and wanted the very best for him. It made him extremely demanding. Albert, who is naturally shy, suffered because of it. Most of the doors in Kew Gardens are locked. Do you have a key to this room? Oh, yes. <laughs> Albert gave me a set of duplicate keys. He agreed I might carry out my studies without disturbing him. It is only temporary. Thank you, miss. None of the three people who work at Kew Gardens know why half of the colonial collection was cleared. So, someone is lying. It is obvious. Hmm. Strange. But thank you ever so much for watching part 14 there, guys. Uh, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. It would really help me out and get to 500 subscribers. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Thank you.